Welcome to an, another episode of the Intuition Revolution. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming Anna Parker Naples, who calls herself the podcast queen. <laughs> um, and I'd love for you to introduce yourself, Anna. Tell us what your business is all about. So I see my business as helping leaders uh, rising, emerging and established to amplify their message. The vehicle that I do that through at the moment is podcasting. So I run the podcast membership, which is a kind of do it yourself, learn how to do it yourself and learn how to launch most effectively, how to grow and monetize your show. And I run the podcast agency for really high level entrepreneurs who want consultancy and launch support. So we do everything for them. But my work really, I see as helping leaders reach one person at a time to lift, trans trans lift, inspire and educate them. Because I really believe that hearing our voices, hearing our stories can change people, change lives. And that's what we're really here to do. Um, I can really see that. And I, and I love that you're saying that because I was looking a little bit um, through your career and I've heard you share about your story before, but I'd love for you to share with, with our listeners as well, is that you weren't always doing that. Um, so how long have you been doing specifically what you've just described? So in terms of helping people with podcasting, that's only been about 18 months at the time of recording. And in that time, I've helped 160 people launch chart-topping podcasts around the world which is kind of nuts that I hadn't even thought of it 18 months ago. And what I kind of want to describe to, to kind of put in context, and I think for your listeners talking about intuition, what my, my intuition journey took me on to bring me here. Would that be all right if I kind of unfold that for you, Anne? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, absolutely. Angie's looking at me here, sitting in my, my studio. It's a very professional looking studio. But actually, I'm sitting in my airing cupboard, which we converted about 10 or 11 years ago after I was given the news to expect that I would never walk again. And I'd been an actor before this happened, and it was a complication in my third pregnancy. And I was pretty, pretty broken. I wasn't getting out of bed. I wasn't washing. I thought everything was over. And somebody really challenged me on my language. Why was I thinking like this? If I'm a really capable, intelligent woman, why am I thinking that I've got no more to give the world? What would happen if actually I could still be the performer I wanted to be, use my voice, which I already knew was my gift, and earn loads of money and be at home with the children? And the answer at that point was voiceover work and voice acting. So I learned all about audio from home in bed, not having, you know, we did back then we didn't have Facebook groups or places or even okay. Google wasn't what it is now, but I learned everything I could. And as a result, I became a leading British voice actor on audio books, high profile video, ga video games, commercials, and had phenomenal success. And along the way, I fully recovered. So I had this moment, which was six years ago now, where I was standing on the red carpets in Hollywood, fully recovered, very glamorous, about as far away as I could possibly be from the woman I'd been six years ago, believing I couldn't walk, not washing myself, not looking after myself. And I had this moment of real intuition and knowing that I was supposed to do something different and that I was not going to be continuing in the voice acting field which was everyone around me thought I was nuts to say, no, that's it, I'm done. I'm literally walking away from this now. And I thought that my whole audio background, and by this point I was speaking on stages internationally about creating great quality audio, and I loved what I did. But all of a sudden it didn't make sense anymore because there was more to me. And that's really where my intuition kicked in, that I was supposed to be doing something more, something greater with my skills. And so at that point, everything changed. So now the fact that Ange knows me is because I came into the online space, determined that I was going to become an author, a speaker, a motivational powerhouse, but I didn't know who I was going to reach or how. I had no idea about how it all worked. I knew I had at least one book in me. I knew I wanted to get this story of untapping and unlocking potential out to the masses. I knew I'd had an awakening of some kind, which we'll probably come back to shortly. 
But what did that actually look like as a business? How do you actually do these things? And one of the things quite early on in my business, in this business, was someone said you should start a podcast. And I kind of went, oh, no, who's ever heard of a podcast? But I kind of went, okay, I will. And I started one and it wasn't doing anything great because I didn't understand how to use it as a business mechanism. But I knew my audio was great. And over time, more and more people kept coming to me saying, how can we podcast? How can we start a podcast? And in the back of my mind, I was going to start a podcast course somewhere in the future to help people with visibility, because that's really the key, what I wanted people to know, that when they see themselves and then they show others their talents and gifts over and over and over again, you can create anything in your life. So I I read a book about podcasting that was so bad from someone who was quite well respected in the industry that was so bad that I sat in my parents garden and I went why hasn't anyone written a book that really tells people how to do this this is shocking why hasn't someone done this and it was like this little voice came and went well you've got to do it and so I did and so now on the back of that just 18 months later I've helped reach millions of people with important messages around the world I've written a best-selling book I've launched the podcast membership and the podcast agency so I don't hang around once I get those nudges that it's time to do something I love this as well because I teach all of the people who come to me for intuition in business that intuition without acting on it is worth nothing if you hear that little voice and you ignore it you might as well not have heard it so Um, I love that you've acted on it, even though you were still skeptical. And it's, it's, it's happened to me many times. It's happened to me, especially with the intuition, because I never considered myself intuitive. I don't know if you know a little bit about my background. I used to be an international business lawyer in mergers and acquisition, traveled the world. Um, But, and I'm going to really shorten because this is about you today. But I I kept on going to psychics who said, you should be doing what I do. You should be doing what I do. And I I didn't even consider myself um, intuition, let alone psychic. But it's only when I finally heard that voice and I say, okay, if I have this gift, I have to do something with it, that I finally embrace what I'm supposed to do here, which also happens to be a passion of mine because I want this to be used in business without having to be a fluffy unicorn, you know? Uh You can just be you. You can have a business. You can even be mainstream. But by supercharging your business with intuition, you really fulfill your purpose and and you everything becomes almost magical. Is that your experience? I'm not sure that I would say it becomes magical. It becomes very purposeful. Yeah. And I think it helps you ride out the storms. Yeah. Because there are always going to be challenges in business. And to say that there aren't would not be true. And I never like to present a polished picture Mm -hmm. what I am is a driven woman because I can see I can make a difference in the world um and I think now if I had not listened to my intuition at that point I would have stayed doing something that I'd fallen out of love with Mm. out of fear and the fear would have been about money the fear would have been about money I was earning a lot I was booked two years in advance which is remarkable for an actor and I, it was overwhelming actually because I couldn't I couldn't scale the business I couldn't work any faster I couldn't talk more words and I just got this nudge that it's not someone else's story I want to tell my story I want my story to be out there and in in following that that nudge that it was my story a book that I'd had inside me for so long just kind of fell out of me in a very short space of time because I stopped telling myself that I couldn't was that your first book? So my first book was Get Visible. Yeah. So this one here was released in, to so Get Visible, How to Have More Impact, Influence and Income. And it tells the story of my disability and how I felt about it and all the limiting beliefs and blocks and imposter syndrome and all of that stuff. It's a very, very raw, open, vulnerable book. But it's also a strategy of how you go from unknown, thinking you don't deserve, to creating exceptional success. So that first book kind of just fell out of me. And that was released November 2019. And then my second book was released exactly a year later, November 2020. Um, And 
it's because I started to trust my intuition. I started to listen to what I was supposed to be doing. Oh, I love that. So do you consider, consider yourself intuitive? Yes, okay. I do. I have a hesitancy there. As you said earlier, there's a lot of the whole woo-woo fluffiness. I am not a lady who walks around wearing tie-dye and doing yoga every five minutes. That's not me. I don't fall into that stereotype. However, when I tap into a sense of connectedness and purpose, suddenly I open up. And in terms of that opening up, one of the most intense experiences for me was when I was completing my master NLP training. So NLP was what opened me up to see possibilities for myself when I was at my lowest. And I went on to train as a master in NLP, which I was completing just around the time that I was in Hollywood that final time. And I had, I had in a session, a breakthrough session, I knew that I'd gone beyond the programming and I'd kind of gone above and beyond and that I'd I'd woke I'd woken up that I'm I'm here to do more. The reason I've always felt the reason I'd always felt so frustrated was because I was supposed to be doing more. I was supposed to be seen more. And whereas before as an actor, I and before that experience, everything would be almost from an egotistical point of view. Look at me, look at me. I want to be noticed. Actually, when I had that awakening, I realized that I am more than capable of being seen and heard. I'm more than capable and comfortable with doing that so that I can show others what's possible, which is very different because it suddenly became of service. And so I think for me, it it did become a conscious awakening. I'm already a leader. I don't have to push and prove to you I'm a leader. And so it's time to lead. And that's very much what happened for me. But nobody tells you you've had an awakening. Nobody actually goes, "Oh, oh, yeah, no, that was it. That was it because it's such a personal experience and I can remember coming home to my husband and trying to explain that this wonderful amazing weird thing had just happened and that I wasn't going back in my box and I can remember him looking at me like I'd been taking mushrooms or something but literally things have never gone back to how they were. That is fantastic. I also hear and this is something that is so common as well is that and maybe that wasn't the truth for you. I don't want to placate anything. But what I hear as well is that it's difficult to find like-minded people that can hear that and share an understanding that awakening um, that are, you know, on your level that can really get it. Did you have that? I didn't have have anyone like that in my world. And I can remember a few days later because my husband couldn't hear it. He was, he's very supportive. He couldn't hear that. He's a very scientific man. So any sense of spirituality meant nothing to him. I can remember sitting down with my parents who, you know, they like books like The Celestine Prophecy or um, Conversation with God, but they're not spiritual at all. They're not. They kind of, I think they'd be interested in it, but are resistant to it. I remember sitting down with them and saying, the thing I've just spent the last six years building, I'm leaving it. It's, I'm done. I'm not going to make my money that way. This is what I'm going to do. And I don't know what it looks like, but I'm doing it. I can remember feeling that and feeling like I was just almost all of the family meeting, talking to a brick wall, really. They just couldn't understand. And I think along the way, it's not just been meeting people who are more open, who have had experiences like that, but also and equally meeting women who are equally ambitious in the messages they want to get out there. They might not have had a spiritual awakening, but they know that there's a very clear reason why they want to build a platform. Why they And it's not because they, they're full of themselves. It's often the opposite. It's because they're very driven to fulfill their purpose to get a message out there and so I think that finding those people has been like I want to say a gift from God but I've gone out and and found them and they found you as well because I'm loud enough yes because I'm seen enough absolutely I love it thank you for sharing that it's so important and it's so important as well that you talk about this visibility without ego I mean we all have ego we, we can't pretend that we don't but in the sense of it's not look at me like exactly what you said I just love it so some of some of my branding is deliberately crafted so that I grab attention, right? My branding is all red. Everything's very striking. But there's a reason for that. Because if I can get people to hear what I'm talking about, 
be it something spiritual, be it something motivational, be it something actually about building a strategy to improve your business. Because when you improve your business, you improve your income, which gives you more freedom, which gives you the confidence to go out and do whatever it is you want to do in the world. And but it's, the, the visibility comes because, and that's easy for me, because I know the impact I can have on people's lives just by sharing that over and over and over again. You can't hear me if I'm not talking. You can't see me if I'm not on social media. That's the way of mm. the world now. Mm. But as well, I think stories are so powerful. And that is actually what drawn me to you, is your story is quite extraordinary, isn't it? Um, how it's you overcame all these obstacles and how you turned things around and how you followed your calling, which is not something that actually I've heard you shared before, that big intuition and that awakening. So I'm really um, pleased and honoured that you share it here. Or maybe it's because I haven't listened to enough podcast episodes with you. I think it depends who, <laughs> whose show I'm on. I don't talk about it a, a lot on my own show. There are episodes where I have. And I think the one of the reasons I don't always talk about that is that I know I can affect change in more people who are not yet awoken. Yeah. Who don't just go, oh, that's wee-wee, that's far out. I can't get that. If yeah. I talk about trusting yourself being seen increasing that then I can guide people towards those next steps for themselves I totally get it and that's also why um I have invited on this show people who are more mainstream not the fluffy unicorns because I want people to realize that we are all intuitive and we can all use this in our business without turning into one um, so, and that's, that's a bit my journey because I was a lawyer and now I'm an intuitive and now I have the two together and I don't think that you have to be one or the other. Uh, we can, we can do it. It's becoming much more acceptable to talk about as well. There are more people embracing a spirituality that's not secular. Mm, there are more people embracing a sense of being in touch with a, a, some sense of other. There are, or, or better yet being in touch with what their own self is trying to tell them yeah whether that's a higher self whether that's something you feel in your body which is actually pretty close to NLP being aware of what's going on so you can kind of read the messages you're sending yourself that's interesting because I talk a lot about intuition coming through the body anyway mm -hmm. that's your body tells you what's right what's not right yeah and it leads you to where you need to go and sometimes it's pins you down until you get it right um, yeah, absolutely I think that's why a lot of people hit burnout lots of entrepreneurs and high level corporate people hit burnout because there's a lesson they need to learn mm. and that lesson when they learn and when they listen and when they take action takes them on a whole different journey so that's yeah I, I love that how do you think you receive your intuition is there a particular way or Oh, that's a good question. Uh, well, I want to say initially this, I feel intuition in my gut, in my belly, but that's not quite true. It feels like it arrives in my head. Okay. So somewhere between those two, very often if there's a warning sign, it'll be in my, my belly. So it's right yeah. in the core of my body, like that fear, yeah. very visceral. But just that knowing that something has to happen, that's, that feels like beyond my head. <laughs> it just arrives. It's and once it's there, it's not going anywhere. It has to, I have to hear it. Mm, I love that. And you've actually described what I sometimes uh, explain to people, which is there's, there's several levels of intuition. There's the gut level, which is the base one. And there's no judgment in that. Then there's the level through the heart, which usually comes with what feels right. And then there's, the higher and it doesn't mean that it's it's better it just means it's of a different quality so there's sort of three levels mm. so it looks like you receive it on the lower and the top do you receive it in your heart as well sometimes never thought about it I'm trying to evaluate now what moments have I felt that I know when I come when I do things that feel like they come from a place of love yeah which actually is what this purposeful Yep. in my work feels like that's from my heart but it's actually more because everything else feels clear okay. not sure that that makes sense this is incredibly hard to talk about and make it sense make it make sense um, isn't it absolutely because we don't have words for it no. and we don't know 
what intuition is, what it isn't. It's something that we've been left in the dark for so long to find out for ourselves instead of learning it from someone. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about what I do is because I had to learn it all by myself. My grandmother could have helped me and she didn't because she was scared by her intuition. Mm-hmm. And so um, we have some social conditioning for sure around whether yeah. it's acceptable to listen to ourselves. Absolutely. And I don't know if you remember doing that, but as a child, we're all told very often, if we say something from our intuition, that doesn't sound rational, don't be silly. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're scolded for it. Um, And especially as women, if we do something that seems irrational, then we are going to be told to, you know, be rational. There's a a whole other back catalogue of what what irrational women are labelled as. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's just because we're I'm not saying that we're the best, but we're better at listening to our intuition because we're more in tune with our emotions because it's something that's more socially acceptable. Mm. So I think men can be just as intuitive. My husband is almost psychic, but he won't own it. It's kind of funny almost. And when we started dating, he would, I would answer his texts before he sent them out and vice versa. And, you know, but don't tell him about anything's intuition. He's an engineer. He won't hear a word. I have that with my husband too. Yeah. Isn't that funny though? But he doesn't have to feel the same things as me. He doesn't have to. I can still know. I still know he's missing out on a whole other world. (laughs) (laughs) Well, or maybe they're here to ground us. I know he's definitely here. Well, that too. That too. Okay. So do you feel that you've shared a big story of intuition, how it's impacted your business? Or would you want to share something else? something more specific no I think I think that that those two moments one completing the NLP and realizing that I was here to do more that I was above and beyond my experience right here on earth that's very much how it felt okay I'm kind of above and beyond where I am and that actually in terms of being visible none of it matters because this is just transient and then the second was again weeks later on the red carpets in Hollywood literally as they're taking the flashing lights going off there was something about that just making me realize that it's safe to leave everything I've done behind and to up level literally was like shedding myself um and and at the time a lot of people around me were saying that's crazy don't do that and very resistant to my ideas for a business and I remember feeling it that was in the November I remember for about three months November, December, January, yeah, it was three months actually, uh, feeling, I don't know what it is I'm going to do, but it's going to be big and it's going to be different and I'll know it when I know it. And then on February the 7th, which was actually my mum's birthday, I just had this nudge five minutes before I was due to get in the car to go on the school run that I had to start a business at that point for mums because I could reach many, many people, talk about my story as a mother, about creating success professionally, even though I was a mother. And I knew that I had to do it really, really fast. And literally the idea hit me just as I was getting in the car, I drove for 10 minutes, got to the other end. I rang my, my, my husband and said, this is happening. I rang my dad and I was like, this is happening. Within an hour, I picked up the kids from school and I bought the domain names for that business. Now, that business is not any longer what I run. But if I'd not taken the action and if I'd not, if I'd not taken the action and I'd not actioned it and failed hard at it, I would not have had the growth that I now have. And I now run, you know, a multi six figure business with lots of different arms to it. I couldn't be where I am now had I not listened to that very strong nudge. And many people around me were going, don't do this. What are you doing? And I just had to say to them, trust me just just trust I know what I'm doing just trust and 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 what was what was interesting was we launched the business on April the 26th 2017 so not even four years ago that same day which was supposed to be like the day that was the day that everything restarted for me and we'd walked up worked our socks off behind the scenes to get everything ready that same day I got more press attention than I did in my whole acting career of decades and my father had a car crash whilst having a heart attack that day and we, we almost lost him and I can remember him being in hospital and me saying to a friend like I've just started doing Facebook lives telling people that they've got to be positive and they've got to think differently when I'm now going through one of the worst things I've ever gone through 
the oh. next day my husband lost his job so we then oh. have no it, you know the income's gone my my father's extremely unwell and yet I've launched this business and I kept thinking well if I've been nudged intuitively to do this it felt so right I've not even stopped to pause I've just gone for it why is the universe throwing all of this stuff up and actually it's because there was more for me to learn that wasn't the end point that was almost just the beginning I love how you put it because very often we attach results we expect certain results from acting on our intuition mm -hmm. and we can be disappointed by the outcome when really with hindsight, we can see that it was just perfect. It was just the best thing that could happen. But if you told me that then, <laughs> I probably would have punched mm. you in the face, <laughs> frankly. Nobody in their right mind would say that to someone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's always an, an, an uh, hindsight thing, but yeah. Gosh, that was a lot. And do you think that might have been your uh, your up leveling, your upper limit kicking in, or or not, or just circumstances? I think just awful, awful circumstances, awful circumstances. But it did, it made me nine months later evaluate: Is this at, are, am I actually trying to speak to the people I want to speak to? And the answer was no. And I'd actually known that all along. I didn't really want to, that business was speaking to mums, and I didn't really want to do that. I didn't really want to pigeonhole myself in that direction, but I didn't know any different. And that nine months later, once, once my dad recovered, once my husband got a job, I then had burnout. And it was in that burnout that I realized I've got to get my book out and I don't want to, I want to speak as me. So I rebranded everything as Anna Parker Naples. My whole company is Anna Parker Naples Limited. And anything else we do is kind of sparks off that. But me, my, and what I want and my beliefs comes first, rather than trying to pigeonhole and confine yes. myself. Absolutely. And so I can it, see that, that setting free made a really big difference. Hmm. Wow, what courage, what courage. <laughs> I'm not sure it's courage. It's just doing the things that need to be done at the time they need to be done and trusting that too. Oh. I can remember thinking, I'd been thinking for ages, I don't want to speak to mums anymore. I don't want to do that. I, but it's going to take months. I'm going to really have to do the branding. I'm, the people who are paying me my membership, I'm going to have to let them down. And that's now my income. And how. And I thought about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then I actually went to an event at Hay House, Hay House Authors event, actually. And in the car on the way home, I just went, no, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm literally tomorrow morning going to tell my members, tell everyone on Facebook, I'm done and I'm rebranding. And I didn't know how it was going to happen. It just was. And I wasn't going to take my time over it. And actually, I think we lost three custom three clients. But that was it. <laughs> and no one cares and I think that's the thing we we worry so much about what people think people don't think anything except what you tell them mm. and the right people come with you no matter what and the wrong people well they're not the right people anyway I absolutely agree with you and it's funny because I've just interviewed today another lady who had a very similar stories who let go of her membership even though it's something she'd nurtured for years and she had like a mm. seven and a half thousand group on Facebook she just let everything go and, but she didn't consider herself intuitive, which was why I found it interesting when I asked you the question that you hesitated and you weren't sure. Um, because it's such a natural thing. We don't really have to think whether we're intuitive or not, do we? It's just something we do. It's just something we do. <laughs> it's the inner knowing and, and trusting our inner wisdom, isn't it? Yeah, and I think actually as a woman, I, I fall in and out of this hormonally. There are times of the month where I can't listen to anything except my fog. Mm. And then when I'm on the other side, when I'm rested, when I'm back to being normal, I can hear myself so much stronger. Mm, that's interesting. I've heard of other people talk about that. Absolutely. Mm. Ha, ah, that's really good. So where can people find you? It's probably the best place is just to come and find me on Facebook or, or whichever your plat favorite, plat favorite platform is. Facebook is the place I hang out the most. I feel most comfortable. So come find me mm -hmm. at Anna Parker Naples and, and come be my friend. Come say hi and let me know you, f you found me on Angie's show. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the last question I usually ask my guests is what would you say to someone who is afraid to use their intuition in business? I would say, why is it? ask yourself why it scares you and 
work with someone to help unlock those limiting beliefs, work with a coach, an NLP practitioner, someone who specializes in limiting beliefs. Because when you get past those, that's where the good stuff happens. Absolutely. Um, but intuition, in my experience, it might be different for our listeners, always takes you out of your comfort zone, always makes you go almost against the grain, not as in a resistance, but more as, you know, if you're a leader, it helps if you to grow. Exactly. And if you're a visionary, you can't just walk down the same path as other people. You've got to take an, you know, a road less traveled. And that's what mm. your intuition helps you do. Absolutely. Mm. Thank you so much for coming on my show today. It yeah, was a thank real you for having pleasure me. talking to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope, yeah, I will have in the show notes all the details for people to contact you. I am in your membership. I had done a podcast myself and I can see the value in your membership. It's just amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, it's given me all the tweaks that I wish I had when I did my first podcast, a bit like you maybe, mm-hmm. um, because I didn't know how to promote it. And there was a couple of things, but it's also, you say this yourself when you promote yourself, but it's also, um, you know, so much more about audio than a lot of people do. Uh, especially, and I'm apologies for those of them listening, but the tech dudes <laughs> who will tell you to invest in really invest, um, you know, expensive um, equipment that you won't even know how to use. So there's there's a lot about simplicity, but there's also what I love about your membership is the the detail into which you ask us to plan so that um, you so make that you reach the your people biggest, exactly, and that you have the biggest impact you can have. Mm. Because once you're launched, it's, it's a lot harder to get your show to reach that level, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and actually, what I should say is, seeing as you're listening to Angie's podcast, you should go find mine, which is Entrepreneurs Get Visible. I talk anyone who's running a business or thinking about it or an entrepreneur or a coach in some way, go and yeah. listen, because I have so many great resources there, and which I is all the stuff it. I wish I'd known about when I had those nudges from my intuition. How do I take this nudge? And turn it into something even if I don't know fully what that something's going to be hmm. I listened to your episode because of course I took part in your challenge as well yeah. you run a challenge regularly I do. and I thought oh well I'm in the membership am I going to get something out of it and I did I'm so glad I did mm-hmm. um, because your challenge is also phenomenal it's, it's a lot of fun and a lot of people connections as well as you say um, with other potential podcaster which the community of podcaster is really important isn't it yeah, um, absolutely. that's how you get guests. That's how you get opportunities. Um, and who knows, you don't know who's going to be in the lead in the podcast. And if you meet them in your group or in yeah. your challenge, or in, then that can be a formidable opportunity. Can't yeah, you? for sure. I'm very lucky that I, I now, because I'm out there and I'm so visible that I attract some really great people with really important missions. Mm. I, I guess I see my, my work as help, just helping them get louder help you reach your people Mm, that's great work thank you so much thank you for having me thank you all the listeners for listening to this episode you will be able to find anna as well in the links in the show notes bye for now